G'day, welcome to my art classes. In this episode, I'd like to explain various shading techniques to you. Shading, or rendering as it's sometimes called, puts life into drawings. It gives a 3D effect. And later in this video, I'll demonstrate a few non-conventional shading techniques. So stay with me to the end. The first thing to observe is where the light is coming from. Next observe where the cast shadows fall. Then note where the highlights are. Note the shape of the shadow that's on the object. Are there shadows created by nearby objects? Observe the reflected light from the surface that the object stands on or reflected from other objects such as the apple. Once again, observation is the key. This is the legendary artist's eye. The ability to see things as they are in detail. An artist doesn't just notice a cute girl. An artist notices that she has a cute turned up nose. That's what makes her cute, with wider than normal pupils. Let's start with the basic technique, hatching and cross hatching. Simple hatching like this can indicate the shadowed side of an item. By varying the pressure you use, you can achieve a good graduation. You can intensify the darker shadows by cross-hatching. Hatching is never going to produce photographic quality if that's what you're after. But cross-hatching can give a nice artistic look. Just use parallel strokes of the pencil in a uniform manner and then you just keep going over them until you get the shade that you want or you can leave them looking a bit on the rough side you can cross hatch that strokes go in the opposite direction to your first ones. And again, you just keep filling in between them until it's the smoothness that you want for your drawing. It's up to you how rough or how dainty your sh shading is. To achieve more photographic quality shading, you'll need to have a range of pencils and you should sharpen them the way I showed you in episode one so that they, your pencil has a triangular shape. You can sharpen the graphite itself so that you've got a flat edge and that will also leave a sharp edge. After you've done that just rub it gently on the paper to smooth it out. Using a softer pencil you can go over your hatching and intensify all the shadows. One by one intensify them until you get the look that you're after. The more you intensify them, the more drama you can get. And by going over them, you'll get a smoothness to the shading. Overlap your strokes to produce a seamless graduation. Speaking of which, this is a standard grayscale, showing a range of shades from white to black. Practice creating a grayscale with different pencils. This will teach you how each of your pencils work and will get you used to using the triangular sides of your pencil lead. A lot of this shading technique is about the feel with your pencil. So practicing graduations will get you used to that feel of the pencil. Here's a way to identify tonal values. Get a piece of red cellophane from your newsagent. Hold it up in front of your eyes over a photograph or a scene and see how it reduces everything to a single colour, making the tonal values more apparent. You can see this horse's head almost disappears. So tonally, it's too wishy-washy and needs to be darkened. 
Alternatively, you can take a black and white photocopy. Either method reduces colours to tones. Understand that our perception of tone is relative. That is, it's heavily influenced by what's adjacent to it. Believe it or not, these are the same shade of grey. Learning tonal graduations and observing the differences will help you create realistic shading. To create smooth tonal graduations, particularly the sort you need for a human face, you need to work slowly and gently, overlapping strokes to give a discrete change from dark to light. Resist the urge to smudge with your finger or with those blending stumps. Although invisible initially, the oil from your skin will stain the paper in time. Smudging is amateurish and it never looks good. It really shows a failure to master the pencil. Another important aspect of shading is your strokes should follow the contour of the object, like so. Your stroke should also reflect the nature of the surface. Once again working from dark to light, just keep intensifying the shadows and if you shade a little bit too dark, just increase the intensity everywhere else rather than starting rubbing out. For hairy animals, use short strokes or long strokes depending on the length of the hair. For this beetle, the hair is rather sparse, so it's random short strokes. And you just lay the strokes one over the top of the other. For tangled hair or fur, make random marks in the style of the tangles, then softly shade over them to indicate where the light is coming from. Add more tangles, emphasising where they create deeper shadows. Over the top, add strokes that represent the hair length. Softly shade over the top again to reinforce the shadows. For human hair, look for the way the hair clumps. Observe the shape of the shadow that the clump creates and draw that. Make your long strokes follow the line of the hair. But there's more to drawing. You're meant to be creating art, not just copying a photograph. Scribbly random shading also works and it's more expressive than a photograph. You can even create outlines with scribbly shading. Really bold hatching also works. This was an illustration for a field day at, at a race course. You can even do portraits with scribbly shading. This is Australian author Sesmo. Practice shading buildings with hard directional shadows. Then try your hand at an animal with fur before advancing onto human faces. Once again, practice is the key. Determine where the light is coming from and maintain that direction consistently. Experiment and learn from your mistakes. Don't be afraid to tear it up and start again. I often do. In the next episode, I want to show you perspective, the mechanics of it, 
and the reality. Until then, practice, practice, practice. Artists, we know where to draw the line.